Hello Suffolk Hobbit fans and well first of all apologies for such a long time since my last video but happy new year to you all I hope you're all well and I hope you've got plenty of new hobby stuff to get you rocking and rolling for the new year so this is the first of a few videos I'm going to be working on um, just the usual reasons why I haven't got much done recently just life and everything else in general plus I've had a lot to do in terms of hobbying um, I've got some plans which if I remember I'll mention at the end of this video or if not I'll probably make a, uh, a different video sort of explaining those plans but it's something exciting something fun we'll see how we do so without further ado here is my Rangers list or army whatever for middle earth strategy battle game it's an army I've been working on since last September, October time. Um, I've played with them quite a few times now, against my good friend Lynn, and uh, also against my wife. Um, and I've been really successful with them, really successful. Um, and I've just loved playing them. I've really enjoyed playing them. I've really enjoyed painting them. I've really enjoyed sort of delving deeper into the lore. Um, it's always been fun to sort of finally actually sort of focus on these guys um, as I feel they should be because I'm sure as you all know the Rangers in the previous early editions they were it's not broken but I, I always felt they, they weren't quite right they didn't quite work in my opinion um, and it's just uh, well you know you had one Ranger one Dunedain for every three every three normal Rangers wasn't it I believe stuff like that um, and you could ally in certain things. They're quite broken in the sense you could mix them up with the Arnor as well. Uh, like the Arnor Force, like Warriors and yeah, King Arthur doing stuff. And that was good, and I did use it for that reason. You know, that they were kind of a handy sort of extra hero to buff with. It, it, it didn't quite flow right, because the Rangers, and as we all know, the Dooms, they're meant to be sort of the ancestors of the Arnor Warriors, and all this, that, and the other. So that didn't quite work. So anyway, it was lovely to finally work on these guys, as I feel they all should have been. And, and yeah, it just worked brilliantly well, really well. The reason I went for this force was uh, there was going to be a little tournament type thing at the local gaming place in Colchester, 40k. Unfortunately, that sort of went south, nothing really come of it. I wanted a small force um, to start, I'd like to start doing tournament games if and when I can. And I figured with all the armies I do have, I thought one of the best ones to go for would be something that's easy to remember, only a few, a few, a few you know, sort of heroic things to really remember and I can really practice and really sort of hone hone the skills of my, you know, gaming ability. And the ranges, you know, suit them perfectly. I mean, you've got heroic, we've got heroic accuracy and heroic strike, is it, I believe, for Arathorn and Halberad. They're sort of the main things, I do believe. Aragorn obviously has all of them, but I wasn't going to use him too much in the tournament as it turned out. Um, he was their main sort of to boost the numbers. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what I was gaming for with these guys, and that's why I was sort of motivated to build them and paint them up like I did. Um, also, a little bit of a uh, boost was because they, uh, f quite a while ago, they obviously re released these guys on a major order special, which was the Grey Company Rangers um, for, I think, Christ, one of the earlier editions of the Middle Earth game. Um, I think it was possibly back when it was the. when they were doing the. Uh, uh, what's it called? The the huge armies, you know, movement tray based Lord of the Rings uh, gaming. Uh, War, War of the Ring, there you go, the War of the Ring rule book. I think that's when these guys first reared their ugly heads. But anyway, yeah, here it is. So in its in its entirety, right here, you do have a thousand points if we're using Aragorn um, and every single model here, obviously, bar Arathorn. Um, this is a thousand points in total with rangers all carrying spears. You've got the mounted knights and the mounted, you know, rangers, cavalry, whatever, and a few doing the day as well. So, if we how should we do this then? So, I've sort of waffled on a bit. So, you look colors wise, I probably should have had them out as a reference to be quite honest, but colors wise is my usual trick, tried and trust tested. You have got Mournfang Brown, you have got Dryad Bark, you've got Rhinox Hide. You have got XV88 in various shades mixed with Mournfane Brown, Ceramite White, all the usual guys. Um, you've got Mechanica Standard Grey. You have got Fortress Grey, is it? I believe it's Fortress Grey. Um, and you've also got Cantor Blue. And those three colours were mixed in various different ways with Abaddon Black, with Ceramite White, and mixed, you know, the blues with the grey. 
the greys with um, the real dark, you know, the Cantor blue, and the other, you know, all the greys and blues mixed together in different ways to create the different shades of blues and, well, greys, <laughs> basically, on the miniatures um, to give them a nice uni unified theme. Um, and it just went from there. There's a small amount of Elysian, Elysian, Elysian green, which is just there on a lot of the ranges. You'll see that. It's just a little bit of a spot colour I wanted to put into them. And a couple of the Dunedane have got a little bit more brown on their uh, paint jobs than, than the greys and the blues. And that's because I wanted to sort of represent the fact that they're meant to be the slightly sort of, well, the way I sort of see it, they're the sort of more rough and tumble. Then then they're descended from the not so lordly uh, houses as the ranges of the north are. Um, so the Dunedain are sort of changed up slightly to make them seem like they've, they've sort of joined them with the Grey Company very you know, the Rangers, sorry, very uh, late on, so they're still, they've got a few grey bits to wear sort of thing, but overall they're uh, much more rough worn in their attire. Um, but yes, that's the colours, you know, it's very much, you know, rinse and repeat, as you see. The characters, they got a little bit more attention to detail with their uh, with their shades. Apologies about the lighting, guys, it hasn't really come out too well at the moment. Um, that's one thing I'm still working on, is lighting to get a better lighting but the colours are really well uh, have come out really well I'm really pleased with them but they will give more attention to detail as we uh, often like to deal with our hero characters so anyway so we've got the like I said earlier on we've got the three made to order you know ranges of the grey company very nice models I did want more but there's so much I was buying at that point in time when it's made to order I had to sort of just bite the bullet and go for it and just order what I could when I could. So I just ordered three of these guys because I was ordering 12 of the uh, um, how how is elves with uh, swords, uh, the breaking of the fellowship, and I'm sure there was something else I ordered as well. So these guys sadly were further down the line, which is a shame. But yeah, lovely models. I think personally they are the best range of models out of the bunch because it's just so cool, really cool models. But yeah, got them. We have got a plethora, that's a word for you, a plethora of ranges of the north. Some of these guys, for example, this one here, fun enough, with the brown overcoat or undercoat, whatever you want to call it, he uh, was one of my original Rangers of the North when I used to use him with my Arnor army. And just a little homage to that, I decided to keep his original brown, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, gambus and whatever. I wanted to keep that on there, just like a little nod to where he come from. And the rest of the guys got a complete overhaul. I had to buy another six. Um, fresh ones to sort of bulk out the army. So that's the Rangers of the North and all their glory. Personal favourite model of mine of the Rangers of the North is actually that guy there with his spear sort of up, sort of pointing. I just sound about that pose I like. It's a good little pose. They're all good poses, but I just like that one. And funny enough, I've only got the one of him, so that kind of makes a bit more novel. Back over to these guys. Uh, bought two sets of these. Unfortunately, the packs were exactly the same, um, which is a shame because there's a few other Doona Day models I really like. There's one guy with the, uh, the sword sort of held out sort of going across his uh, hip, um, there's another one as well, another older looking gentleman. Uh, but again, these are all good sculpts, I do like the old Doom the Day models, they're really cool. So yeah, got them guys painted up, and as I said before, I tried to make them look a bit more sort of rustic and a bit more, you know, weather worn. And now my ultimate pride of, the, uh, of this army are my rangers mounted, or mounted rangers even, it's bad English isn't it? And here they are. So. This guy here, this was the first guy to be done as a ranger on his horse, and he is originally an Aragorn, metal Aragorn, for the uh, Fellowship um, range, you know, the Fellowship Aragorn from the very first sort of miniatures. He's been heavily modified, he's been heavily green stuffed. Um, I chose him because of the fact he's got all these cool bits on the back of his uh, coat there, and that just looks superb, so that went really well. Um, yeah, I basically, so. He is half a Rohan rider, half Aragorn. Um, I have chopped his hand off and replaced it with a Rohan rider's uh, spear and hand, obviously. Um, I've green stuffed a hood over his hair. And then I literally brutally used plies to literally just bend his arm round and then have it on his hip to make it look like he's riding kind of casually. But I had to shave down his elbow here to smooth that off to make it look more natural and a bit more rain. So that went quite well, pleased with that, and that was the first everyone I'd done uh, of that, of like a conversion sort of thing, so I'm really pleased with how it came out, really, really chuffed for that, and uh, I'm quite happy with the paint job. 
Um, and then just green stuff as usual, around the sides, here, there and everywhere. Beautiful. And I pinned him as well, obviously. I downside with these guys, especially with this horse and this horse, is obviously because they're the Rohan horses, there's only one anchor point on this horse. And unfortunately, when I was transporting this guy, having a little holiday to uh, see some family and stuff, on the transportation trip, his foot got snapped. So I had to re-pin. Um, I'm hoping that'll hold forever, because to be quite honest, I'm not going to be able to do anything. If he breaks, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. I'll have to come up with a new solution. But he's got there's a massive great pin running all the way through that foot and all the way through into the base um, to really give it some strength. But my plan is, having said that, I'm going to get a small pin and discreetly slide it through the base here into this foot or this back foot um, just to give it a bit more strength, a bit more of an anchorage. And uh, yeah, that should be okay. And I'm going to do the same with this horse as well, just here. Get it done as well. Yeah, but that's to give it a bit more strength. That's the only downside to these conversions is the fact that the horse is quite weak. I probably could have used other horses, but I was on a budget. I was on a bit of a time limit, and I had to sort of crack on with it. So yeah, but I'm really pleased with that. So that's that's Aragorn, Range of the North, but as a Range of the North. And then we got a more simpler. After hacking away at metal from Aragorn sculpt and that, I wanted something that's a little bit less time consuming because time was going. So I've got a couple of my old Arnor Rangers, um, repainted, chopped in half. And uh, oh, there we go. And uh, yeah, much easier to do these guys. So let's try and get this in the focus a bit better. So, literally, again, same thing Rohan riders on the bottom half. And I literally chopped them in half. Uh, the rangers were then chopped in half. I spent a lot of time sort of dry fitting them, making sure that they actually fit together nicely, that they sat level, they looked realistic, because obviously there's quite a gap when you first cut them in half. So I had to try and sort of line them up. Once I was happy with the positioning, with the sizing, making sure they all sort of match nicely, pinned them very loosely, because they're plastic, so they don't really need a huge amount, but I just wanted to make sure the bond was absolutely secure. And glued them down, a little bit of green stuff to cover up any sort of marks, and you know, any sort of bits obviously don't look natural. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and they just painted them up. Happy days. Really pleased with how they come out. And again, because the Rangers have got bits on their backpacks as well, it kind of makes them look a bit more, you know, like they're, they're out, you know, they're living with their horses, they're riding along, which is cool. I'll pose this guy on the right, you can probably see. I pose the horse slightly tilted, and he's also slightly tilted. And I wanted that sort of look of like he's sort of seen something that's caught him off guard, just as like the horse might be, as he's riding, the horse is sort of turning to ride. And that's when he's seen somebody sort of shooting up high. I thought it's kind of a cool little pose. Got this guy here, just normal sort of ranger pose I, got, I just like the openness of this pose it kind of looks like he's sort of getting ready to like charge or it's really cool so yeah please then you might notice as well guys that there's numbers on these bases and that is for obviously for gaming purposes because well when you've got nothing but an army of heroes each with their own might will and fate things can get complicated to remember so that's what that's there for so i can keep tab and keep a note of everything that i've got what i've used <laughs> what's going on yeah so that's that um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Can't think. Well, until I remember what I was going to say. So we've got my favourite. Ah, oh, such a shame the lighting's not so good. Maybe if I drop it down a little bit, I might be able to get a bit of a better angle. Uh, hey, there he is. Halberad. Awesome, awesome miniature. Really like this pose. It's a really nice sweeping pose. It's really cool. Paint in the same way as the rest, obviously, but with a lot more layers, a lot more detail, which we're not quite getting on uh, on this, unfortunately. But believe me, I spent many hours painting these guys. Um, loving the bases as well. One thing I've done with all the bases, lots of floral colours, sort of darker tones of flowers as well, um, whites and purples and dark colours and things, to give it that look of like, you know, the Northlands, where you get the sort of the rougher, tougher sort of flowers, the more unusual, vibrant colours, rather than down the south, you've got the pretty flowers and things. I wanted that sort of more northern, rough, you know, lavenders, the the, the deep purple colours that you get from from flowers and like the, the shrubs and things from uh, sort of like, you know, Yorkshire and, you know, the, the moorlands, all that sort of thing. So hopefully I've encapsulated that with these bases. Made to order Halberad. I saw, as soon as this dude come out, I was buying him because... People that sell these guys on eBay are just heartless and just, I oh, don't even get me started. It really annoys when people sell these models at such a silly inflated price. I can understand the collector's point of view, but there's there's, there's collecting price and then it's just being silly for the sake of it. But yep, yeah, this is this dude. 
I was thinking of doing some flamboyant with the flag, but it ultimately I decided to go with the black and the white flag with just a simple highlight and a little gold crown edge tie. Because I think subtlety works better with this. I've seen we've done some real cool freehand stuff, but I don't think it would actually add to the model myself personally. Um, maybe some of the far, far better talent than me could maybe make it work, but I don't think I'll do the model justice. And I think the flag, as it is, is more than enough for what, what it represents. We have Arathorn. My favourite model, I love Arathorn. I like his character, you know, the lore that exists of him, I really like. Um, he was originally painted different as well, because I had this dude, um, along with a few others from my Arnhem army, but I then changed him round. He sort of just acted as a captain, really, for fluff reasons. Um, but yeah, yeah, I've repainted him, gave him some much more, gave him more detail, done a nice sort of cloak on the inside there. I've tried to make that look of, you can see that the weave of his of the material, try to do that there. His beard, nice and grey, gun white. I love the tool belt he's got. I say tool belt, just all the belts and the little dagger and things. Really is a cool, cool character. Personally, I think he's a wasted character in terms of gaming uh, uses. I think for what he's meant to be, he's Aragorn's father. I'm sure I've said this before, but he's Aragorn's father. He's he's a lord of the Dunedain. You know, he's of the blood right line of Isildur. Yet for game purposes, he's a good model for up to a certain point, but he's only got two heroic actions. He can't take any other war gear. Um, I think he's got one extra attack than Halbrad, but overall, Halbrad gives a good, gives him a good run for his money, really. Um, and I think that's a shame because Arathorn he should be a little bit more uber than what he is. He, sh you know, he should. In gaming terms, I mean, he should have been given something a little bit better to work with. Something more to... Just to use. I f I f I'm frustrated by him, because I love using him. You know, for the fluff and for the character and that, and him with Halbrad as a win-win situation. He can take on average enemy heroes and stuff nicely. You know, he's got the heroic accuracy, which is helpful. And, but he's just missing that something. I feel he should have had the... Just something extra, like maybe even just the free point of might each turn, because he's the blood of a Sildor. Why? Why wouldn't he have that? What? Why does it skip him and go to Aragorn? I just feel I understand that you know you want Aragorn in this army to be as good as he is, and you need Halbrad to be where he is. Each character here has his niche, and even Arathorn does within in between Halbrad and Aragorn, he has his niche. But I just feel he could be a little bit more without being overpowered or without being given too much more of a points cost and just reflect what he is as a character in the actual book and the and the, the, the fluff you know that that's how i feel i would love to know what you guys think and like war gear wise you know why 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 doesn't he have the access the, the option for a horse why doesn't he have the option for maybe even more armor um why can't he have an upgrade for a sword i've often thought you know why couldn't he have like a, an heirloom, a more recent heirloom of like a Dunedain chieftain's sword? Is that something that's actually mentioned in the books? I'm almost sure that Aragorn actually does have a chieftain's sword. I might have to look into that. Just, just something in the back of my mind is making me think that that is actually a thing. But anyway, you know, why couldn't he have the option of like a war gear of like a, a the chieftain's sword? And even if it doesn't exist, why couldn't they make it up? Uh, just to give him an option of something a bit more you know, awesome, you know, the chieftain's sword could allow you to always always wound on a on a 4 plus, or allow you to re-roll any failed wounds, or just something just even if it costs 5 or 10 points more, with our, with our thorns, 3 attacks I think he has or 2 attacks, whatever it is but it would just give him a little bit more potency to reflect what he is as a character that's what I think, you know, what do I know? I'm not a huge heavy tournament player, but I just feel there's a bit of a gap there for Arathorn and he could be so much more. And then last up is one of my more favourite poses of Aragorn. Um, Heroes of the West, original release, I do believe. Um, and again, I've gone for that sort of look on the inside of his cloak, mate, trying to capture the, uh, the, the wisps of his... the wisps. The... The material look, the stitching, whatever you want to call it, I'm lost for words, but that sort of look of his cloak to make it look you can see like the you know the weave of his cloak and stuff. Um nice it's just simple job on this one. I've painted you know some little details on his uh forearm his uh arm braces there. I can't think we call them not greaves, are they? 
but yeah, I've painted them up, put a little diamond in there, given it like the Arnold diamond type look, just something to sort of tie them in with a younger Aragorn. Um, I've also given them a slightly less heavy stubbly beard, sort of tash. Kind of looks a bit more Spanish, really, doesn't he? He's got a bit more of a Spaniard look to him. Maybe he's just come back from his wars with the uh, the Easterlings and things in South Gondor, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, no, I do like this guy. Haven't based him up yet. Shame, shame. That's awful, isn't it? I've, I've, I've videoed a model that I've not completely finished. I apologise. Please, please don't hate me. <laughs> Um, but there you go guys, so I probably went off on a bit of a tangent there like I normally do. But yeah, that is my Rangers of the North Army. I um, really love them, they're so much fun to play with. Like I say, every game I've played with them so far I've won. Not always massively, a couple of times pretty well. And a couple of times not quite so, where I've won literally purely on the... Uh, the what do you want to call it, the objectives of the games we're playing. Um, even at one point, I think me and my friend, myself and my friend still need to double check this, but I technically won the game because I did hold all the objectives or, or met the objectives needed, but I was actually tabled by the very last turn. We kept rolling the dice and the turns just kept on going. <laughs> it was getting ridiculous. But technically I did win, even though I was tabled, I had I had succeeded in doing everything I needed to do. So we need to sort of double check if that means I would ultimately lose, because technically I would have done if it was real life. but. Who knows? But yeah, no, these guys are really good. Interesting way of, way of playing them. Um, you do need to spend your might, will, and fate. You know, every chance you get, don't save it. Just spend it. You know, th there's no point saving it. They're not st strong enough or tough enough to to wait for something better to use those points on. But, you know, if you need to use a might point, use it. You need to use a fate point. Well, if you ain't got a choice, you got to use it. But you know what I mean. You, the might and the will, you need to use as soon as you can. Because if not, it could be wasted and you could lose four or five models in a turn that never got to use their points and you've wasted 25 point model for no reason so yeah rangers of the north guys thanks for watching appreciate it i appreciate all that you subscribe to me i've had a few more subscribers the last couple of months thank you ever so much i always i know you guys must get bored of hearing this but i really do appreciate it it's very kind of you to always enjoy watching my videos um keeps me going i really enjoy it i really enjoy sharing my hobby with you Here's to a new year of fun. I've got lots more coming up. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I will do another video in regards to my future plans of, uh, well, what I'm going to get up to. Watch this space. It's going to be fun. Take it easy, guys. See you later.